Hey, everybody. We're so excited to be here for our inaugural episode um, of Sunday Shift, where we're going to talk all things General Hospital. Um, it's very exciting. This has been a long time coming, um, especially because Sandra and I have taught General Hospital all pandemic. Um, <laughs> so we are ready. Um, and so we're going to be doing this weekly. It'll be some combo of the three of us that you'll get to know every week. Um, and yeah, like that's pretty much it. And I just want to get ready and started. So I'm, we're going to do some intros. I'm going to throw it to, uh, to Tanya first. Hi, everyone. My name is Tanya Love. I am a 20 year resident of Oakland and I work for the city of Oakland more on the political side. I work for a city council person, but I've been a GH fan since I was a like 16 at least. Started watching because my mom and my grandmother used to watch um, Young and the Restless and General Hospital. And my mother would send me and my brother to Alabama over the summer, that's where I was born and raised. And at first, when I was a kid, my grandmother wouldn't let me watch. We had to go outside when her stories came on. And, but one day she decided I was old enough to sit in the house and watch Young and the Restless with her. And that was our connection. We would watch Young and the Restless at 11 o'clock. And then when I came home that summer, I told my mom that I was watching Young and the Restless and she's like, oh, that's great. And we would watch it and General Hospital. And so I've been watching it ever since. And my mom and my um, grandmother are no longer with us, but I still watch it. And I think about them as I'm watching it, but I'm just hooked on my own cognizant because it's it's juicy and I can't stop it and even though I may not watch it at two o'clock every day because of my job I record it and I watch it on the weekends and catch up so I'm ready (laughs) what's the first storyline you remember I would say the first storyline that I can remember it's probably that the first one I watched was probably um when Robin and Stone were together and Stone passed away from HIV AIDS. Um, It's not my favorite storyline, but it's the one that I clearly remember the most, earliest I remember. It was sad. Now I'm all misty about that storyline. I was watching (laughs) some of that on YouTube earlier today. Uh, Sandra, Sandra. Oh, I'm a little misty too. Um, I'm Sandra Criswell. I am... I'm also in Oakland. I've been here for four years. Um, And yeah, I work with social justice nonprofits. I don't know how much of that will actually show up in this uh, general hospital analysis. We'll see. Maybe we'll be surprised. Um, I've been watching general hospital, I I would say since I was in utero. It's definitely like a family thing. Um, Also watched a lot with Um, My mom and my grandmother, um, we were an ABC soaps family. So all my children, One Life to Live, General Hospital. I even watched Port Charles. That's like the level of dedication. I know, Port Charles. Um, Vampires, Angels, that's a whole other podcast. Um, And um, there's actually a really funny story that I just remembered about the impact of General Hospital on my childhood, which is that I was playing Barbies with some friends and they were like, well, you know, the stork is going to bring Barbie a baby. And I was like, oh, that's not how babies are made. First, you have to like, they have to take off all their clothes and kiss and they have to fall asleep on top of each other. And then when she wakes up in the morning, she's going to be pregnant. And that was all thanks to <laughs> soap operas. And my mom had to field some very uncomfortable conversations with other parents after that. Um, so it's just always been present in my life. But I really started to watch on my own, like choosing to watch on my own, like in the mid 90s, maybe a little bit after Stone and Robin. Like I remember Stone and Robin but I think the storyline that I really, that really hooked and I felt like, oh, this is my storyline was when Nicholas um, Cassadine was introduced as Laura's long lost son. And I love that because of course it brought the Cassadines back onto the canvas. And I was so young that like, I didn't remember them otherwise. So they were brand new to me. And so like Stefan and Helena, 
but then also it kind of launched the that teen scene so nicholas um lucky liz sarah weber who nobody remembers and emily um so and that really felt like my teen scene where i was like tuning in to find out like what are going to happen to these kids um so that that's a even though i have complicated feelings about uh, all of those characters now um <laughs> i still hold that time period really dearly yeah i, I just wanted to say I used to have the biggest crush on Tyler Christopher. And I think, yeah, he was amazing. And I think I may have been older than him, but I didn't care because I just <laughs> I just thought he was so cute. And I wanted to, I forgot to tell like my G story was that um yeah, when I was in college, I went to Cal and we had a student organization called Black Engineering and Science Student Association. And excuse me, we had an office. We had a student office where the students would go in and study and there was a couch and there was a TV and I, I would watch GH every day in between classes and I would not be the only one. I had all the guys in there watching the show with me and their favorite character was Jason Morgan because he was the most manly and he didn't talk very much. So I always thought it was neat that I actually had these you know, manly men watching General Hospital with me and, and really getting into the story. So that was, that was fun for me. <laughs> that is funny. I, you know, it's that sparked for me. So I grew up, um, Tracy also do social justice stuff. I'm sure it will pop up because I like rant and rave about the cops all the time um, on GH. But um, it, I grew up, as, as a days of our lives kid so like my sister like there was never any boundary of like when I was able to watch versus when I wasn't so like I was just like one years old sitting on her lap watching that and you know um and so I went in and I watched Passions which was a mess all through like high school um and so when I went to college um we like had like this really small room kind of like you but it was um all of like the black students would hang there um, between classes and so they watched the ABC soaps and I was like I guess and so I started watching all my children um, and one life to live and so all my children happened it was like kind of the height of like Leo and Greenlee I know just like the best of super couples um, it was also around the time when like one life to live we had like the Jessica and Natalie twin reveal um, so it was like I was like oh this is some mess I kind of like this um, and so I had gone home one summer, my mom was have, had a daycare in the house. And so I would like um, watch the kids in the afternoon. So they would take their nap and the time they took their nap was when General Hospital came on. So I would, that's what the summer I started watching General Hospital was like 03, 04. Um, and I think the, the storyline, it wasn't, it was a little bit after, but the storyline that hooked me was Carly in the panic room. Like the first, when I think of like first watching GH, I think of like Tamara Bonds, Carly, like in a panic room with Rick um, in Elizabeth's house, <laughs> like all of that mess. And I was like, oh, and then I went back, I was like, y'all, this is good. And so everybody started watching GH. Um, and so now folks still watching, they're like, oh yeah, I remember Carly in the panic room. So that yeah. was my, that was my jam. That was like, the, I, I figure one of the best storylines, but it also demonstrated what could be wrong, what can go wrong with the writing because it, it, it was, too, it, the storyline was too long, I think, especially once Carly escaped the panic room and she got kidnapped again. And then she, you know, then she decided to give, it was just the ramifications of it, I felt was too much. But then maybe it's because I just didn't like the fact that the way it happened. Maybe it was just my personal opinion, but I kind of feel like sometimes a really great storyline can just fail in the end if it didn't, if it's not handled right. And so. Yeah. We know a lot about that with these current storylines. Um, and so I'll just do like a really quick recap of like what happened this week. Um, and then we'll get into like kind of our favorite moments, like the best of what we're gonna see more of, kind of like if we were in the writer's room, which is one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, so this week, 
Um, just some, some highlights. Uh, Jordan and Portia got caught in a basement. Why did they even go down there? But anyway, um, and they land in the hospital. One of the things that was interesting is that we find out um, that Portia has a secret about uh, paternity. Um, and so that's happening. And she also sees the like, connection between Jordan and Curtis. The first time Curtis called Jordan baby, I was like, did he say that? But then he just kept doing it. I was like, oh no, he said that. Um, Jason and Carly got closer. Um, we'll talk about that. Um, yeah, they're on the way to being in love now, apparently. Um, Jax, which was like the standout for me this week was confronts Nina about Sonny. Um, and I think Peter did this a couple weeks ago where he like spoke for the audience a lot, but Jax like really bought it and was like, no girl, what is this? <laughs> um, Ava's body man beat up Nicholas um, because I think that we've seen like a very softer side of Ava um, and we got to remember that she's effing crazy um, and I love it. <laughs> and then we had uh, the Trina versus Esme uh, showdown, which culminated in Trina's famous line, you're not handsome. And so those are like the big sweeping moments overlap of the week. Tanya, what was your favorite moment of the week? Actually, I feel like in that Trina storyline, I, I think the best line she gave was when Esme was just like, I'm super disappointed and all this stuff. And Trina was like, yeah, I'm sure you'll get over it because I will too. Or something. I was just like, I'm already over it. I was like, yes, that right there <laughs> was amazing. Um, I also, I actually enjoy, I love Ava and Nicholas together. And so I love it when I loved when she was saying, you know, you're doing too much. You're a danger to me and all this good stuff. And then after he gets beat up, she comes back. She's like, oh, are you OK? I'm super uh, disappointed that we didn't get to see them kiss. Maybe it was because of COVID or whatever, but I would have liked to see the actual kiss. But I still I love when they're in love with each other. And I also I agree. I love when she reverts back to her her gangster because she is she's a gangster and she's like one of the best she reminds me of faith except she's not as crazy as faith was but she's a tough you know mobster woman even more than car i don't i don't believe carly as a mobster woman i think it's funny i think it's fun and great when she does it every once in a while but i do not believe her and that as a sustainable role so I believe her as a mess right That's what I Carly so has. um I feel like Ava is way more of the gangster than Carly is and so I love those scenes but I agree Jax's scene was with um Nina was the best I look at Carly as like a scrapper you know what I'm saying like Carly will fight you like she's gonna pull your hair she'll like you know whatever she'll break a nail and get mad about it Ava will murder you. <laughs> like, she will change out your pills with a placebo and then you right. will die. <laughs> like that's who Carly Ava doesn't, is. Carly doesn't have the attention span to for like strategy that Ava does. I mean, not to say that Ava is always like rational and grounded, but like she's got like some Scorpio energy or something going on where she's like, I'm taking, like, I have my sights set on you. I'm taking you out. Mm -hmm. including if you're my own daughter <laughs> which we'll get into I'm sure <laughs> Sandra what was your favorite moment of the week after that mic drop <laughs> um oh so many great moments this was uh one of the best weeks we've had since the um since the Spencer party debacle which I think was one of the best weeks of the year um but I, this would be no surprise that Trina uh, just Trina in general is my favorite moment, but um, the listen, Spence, you may be rich and sophisticated, but let's get one thing clear. You're not handsome. And it's the combination of the delivery and like his complete and total devastation afterwards of like, Trina doesn't think I'm handsome. Like no one's ever told him that he wasn't handsome before. Um, it was, and he totally is handsome, but still <laughs> so handsome, and that's what made it even better. It's right. what made it even better because that's what every fuckboy needs to hear. 
at right. some point in their life. You're not handsome. You're not handsome enough for this shit. I feel like it's also mm-hmm. the underlying thing. Yes. Um, but then of course, followed by the um uh him trying to get Esme to copy edit his apology text. <laughs> so it's, it's like that of combination of moments of like. Spencer finally getting dressed down, which I love Spencer. He's like one of my problematic faves for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, like ever since, you know, the character has been born, but especially now. Um, and like, he needs this. It's, it's going to build character for him. Um, and we've, I've been waiting for him to get dressed down and I look forward to more of it. Yeah, he kind of pissed me off during the argument where he was like, Trina, you're accusing her of doing it. I'm like, yeah, she is because she did it. But the fact that he was taken up for Esme, I was pissed off. I was like, what the fuck, dude? You know she did it. <laughs> Here you are trying to, I was like, it, 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 it just seemed like they were ganging up on her. And I love the fact that Trina did not back down, even in the face of his like instigation. I love that. Yeah. but yeah I agree the copy editing of the text was just the it was everything mm-hmm. I would oh, yeah. I would say that the t- this teen scene is really like carrying the show on their back because I have been getting really frustrated I mean I'm not gonna give them a GH I, one of the lowest points of quarantine was when like we didn't have any more GH and I was like what's gonna happen um mm-hmm. and I and I think that some of that like the kind of moving around that they have to do is like showing up in some of the way that the storyline is like really desperate. Like we don't get places where people are like together a lot. Like I think Carly and Jason's wedding will be some of that, but just like the really random interactions of characters who you might not see. Like I've said, like, why does like Spencer needs a job? It'd be cool if he goes to work for like Brando. Like, you know what I mean? Just like, so even people, I mean, that's what we start with like, huh? Yeah, the stripper. I'm at work at the, oh, the car okay. shop, not a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little too old that really cool, so I'm glad that you're helping me out <laughs> um, <laughs> awesome. but yeah we just don't have like that rant we don't have interaction like we Sandra and I were talking about this with like when um the sauce debacle of like how they dis- discovered Sunny. Like when Trina went over there with the sauce, it was all about that, which isn't realistic for teenagers. Like you would be like, girl, what's up with uh, Spencer's crazy girlfriend? Or what's up with this or that? Like this girl said to Jocelyn, to Jocelyn bought her kidney. Like this is wild. We wouldn't have like skipped that over for some sauce for my dad. Um, so I'm glad they like looped that back around. And like these teens like definitely understand the assignment. They are, you know, with Spencer and Trina, it could be easy for people to like turn against that and not ship that, but it's the interaction, it's the way that that actor looks at Trina, like, you like, okay, you know what's up, like, um, so I, I think that the teens are like definitely, definitely carrying the story on their back, the show on their back, um, so that's some of my favorite this week, yeah, definitely. what do you want to see more of like what do you, what if if you could like write it what would you see more of definitely more sprina um and you know maybe i don't know i kind of feel like nicholas and trina or no spencer and trina or are the teen stars right now i mean even though they try to get us to love cam and and um it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I think it, it, I think, you know, Trina and, and Trina and Jocelyn are great friends. Um, but I think, you know, right now the couple to be is Sprina. Um, so I want to see more of that. I'm actually really interested in the whole um, Sam and Dante dynamic. Um, but I really want the like, I, I actually watch, I watch what happens on social media and the talk and right now. And um, the, the, the concern that they have is the fact that they share a brother. So I kind of feel like that needs to be confronted a little bit. Not that I'm upset that they do and that they can't be together. But if people, if, you know, the, I'm wondering how the brother would feel about seeing his brother and sister dating and getting married. So they share um, the little boy. 
um, as a brother. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that, that is an interesting dynamic. So I'm interested. I do want to see more of Sam and Dante and I actually find them to be a more romantic and interesting couple than, um, Finn and Elizabeth even though, you know, Finn and Elizabeth kind of make sense to me, but I don't find them to be that much interesting as a couple, except to the fact that they have the secret of Peter's death in between them. I think that's um, interesting, but I also want to see what happens with that cliffhanger with Peter and Nina. I think Peter is going to out her because apparently Jax didn't do it, but I think Peter definitely will at the same time he's supposed to be dead and he's in trouble. So there's just a lot going on. So yeah, but yeah, those are the the storylines I'm most interested in. Mm-hmm. That's interesting that people are worried about them sharing a brother. People running around Port Charles, triple cousins. Like, I think it'll be fine. <laughs> like, it's fine. <laughs> Center your face. Go ahead. Tell us what you're right. thinking. Oh yeah, I, I agree. I, it's like so many people, like everyone's related as like, related through marriage like related through all these as long as you're not actually blood related I feel like on general hospital it's on and even sometimes if maybe like there are people who thought they were blood related that aren't and then they got together later on like Ned and Sky. yeah that was gross that was gross but yeah yeah I would say of course more of the teens more of the teens more um Sydney Michaela and Alan or, and Nicholas Chavez they're so great their chemistry is amazing and it's really fun to also watch them interact and like grow with the veteran actors and really feel like they can hold their own like Trina and Ava huh, such a like sweet connection and like such a way in which you also get to see Ava in a way that you've never really seen her before because she was never even really like the way that she is with Trina, the way that she, with Kiki. In part because Kiki was like a lot, was older than Trina when she started on the show, but it was just a very different dynamic. Um, And I agree they're really carrying the show on their backs and they, um, It's part of like the fun of like young romance on a soap, right? That they're still like, they're teenagers. They have like crushes and like, they don't know quite how to talk about their feelings. And, you know, they're kind of inexperienced, but they're also have this like high stakes, like stalker drama, which is what the teen scene did not have before. It was so wholesome. Um, So it's it's actually like, I, I actually even say like more Esme even as a Sprina fan, because she is bringing this kind of like high drama and like, I'm, and I think we'll talk more about predictions later, but like, you know, now we know she was adopted and we like, who on the canvas is she tied to? So I, I want more of her because I also like the drama that she brings to Trina's uh, and Spencer's storyline. Um, and I want um, more Valentine and Anna, more, more, more. I am so thirsty for them. I'm parched. Like it's been so long since they kissed on the 4th of July or like around then. Um, and there's been some like flirty moments since then but I'm ready for that storyline to, to move on. And since, um, since Wes Ramsey is back again as Peter, I'm assuming that's coming. Um, so I'm excited for that. But just in general, like, I wish the writers would focus more on like romance. Like there are a lot of like couples, potential couples going on, like new couples, but they're, they tend to be really plot driven. Um, and, and like, there's not as much focus on like, um, the connection, right? Like, Trina and Spencer wouldn't work if there wasn't like a connection that was developed between the characters, right? They took, they actually took the time to make you feel attached to them before you found out like, oh, actually Spencer's an even bigger mess than you knew. Um, And so I just want to just bring back the romance, bring back the, um, like I think about when I think about Leo and Greenlee, Um, because I recently did like a rewatch of some of their arc, Um, they didn't actually get together 
over one storyline. It was like, there were several storylines that they were moving through and building the relationship and building the tension. And I, I don't, I feel like either things happen like right away on GH or they take so long. I think that was like part of the problem with Cam and Joss. I was like, I had forgotten that that was even like a thing that had happened, like with the weird diary shit from that Dev did. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, the real reason they were so mad at each other about the Jason stuff was because they were actually in love with each other. And I was like, I mean, I, mean, I guess, like, I don't really care, but sure, that's fine. Um, so, and I, and again, I don't mind Cam and Joss, they're fine. I think like actually what they're doing right now with them is like exactly where they need to be. Like getting them involved in Trina and Spencer's storyline also just makes them more interesting by proximity, so. Yeah, I think that's right. Go ahead, Zion. Oh, like, can we go back to Valentine and Anna? Cause I just want to say, oh my God, Valentine is so romantic. I just fell in love with him when he decided that he wanted to be with Anna because every time he said something to her, I would just be like, oh my God. He, <laughs> and like, why isn't she, why isn't she falling for this man right now? And it like, in normal terms, I probably would not be interested in Valentine at all. But he was just so attractive to me during that week with him and Anna. I was just like, oh my God, he's amazing. So it makes yeah. you forget he pushed Ava into the water. Right. But then at the same time, when, even when he was with Nina, he was also very romantic with her. And I loved that when they got together. I, I guess I just like it when Valentine is in love because he's so problematic. But when he's with that woman he's in love with, oh, my God, she's it. And it's I like seeing that aspect of him. So, yeah, that was amazing. He's like so smooth. It's like almost uncomfortable. Like when I'm watching, especially him and Anna together, I'm like, <laughs> did he really say that? Yes. Did I really like that he said that? Yes, exactly. I shouldn't, but I do. I love it. I love Valentine and Anna. And I would say that I think what you said about Esme is right. Like the teens, I, I mean, they've been through some shit, right? Like, so they had like Oscar who died like, on their Walks to Remember storyline. I actually didn't even think they were gonna really kill Oscar. And I was like, oh. Um, and then they, you know, were kidnapped. There's always something that made them kind of like tight and wholesome. And so Esme is bringing it in and taking them from like these wholesome high schoolers to like some messy young adults. And I'm ready for it. I think, um, and I appreciate that. Like if you watch any of their social media interactions, they kind of have her back. Like, yes, she's like wild as a character. <laughs> and like, we really like her because soap fans can get kind of wild with like how they treat people and blur that line. Um, so that's one thing. And then I just like, not a specific plot point, but to Sandra's point about, I just want more interaction between people. I want more things that are not plot driven, but that are character developing. Like, if you talk about Leo and Greenlee, our faves, right, they had, like, moments where they were just, like, talking about a dog, or they were just, like, part of, like, I mean, I'm an old school J-Sam fan, not anymore, I think that that magic kind of, like, lost, I thought that, um, I thought that what Sam had with Billy, or Kelly Monaco and Billy Miller had was, like, really great, um, I had stopped watching and came, and came back, basically, I came back when Steve Burton came back, um, and I started watching with Sandra actually. Um, and so she caught me up. She paused for me and was like, this is what's happening. And I was like, okay, now I got you. But I went back and watched the videos and I was like, oh no, this was really good. And when Steve uh, Burton came back, they just didn't have the same kind of, um, they just didn't have it. And part of like why they were able to build that magic is because they had like the funny and like silly stuff. Like, you know, they're cooking together and like, there's a whole like YouTube tequila and dominoes like series with their like funny interactions. It wasn't just all go, go, go. And so I think that that is how you build out really great relationships. And I want to see more of that. I want to see how, I want to see Spencer and Dante interact. interact. I want to see um, just all these people who should be in relationship with each other, like be in relationship with each other because we haven't seen that. And that's been really disappointing. Yeah, I think if and when Sunny gets back, I, I want to see that interaction with um, Spencer because they had a great relationship when 
it was Nicholas J. Bechtel. So mm. they, that, that relationship, it would be really interesting. Even it would be interesting as him, as Mike. I, I think I, I actually want my, I actually want Sonny to come back to Port Charles as Mike first and, and interact with people and then him getting his full memory, kind of the way that um, Billy M Miller's Jason was not necessarily Jason, even though he was on the scene. I want to see how he interacts with all the characters with his new personality. I think that'll be interesting. Yeah, I agree. I, I also just thought that that was going to be the storyline when they did it. Right. And I'm sure we'll get into this um, shortly when we talk about stuff. Get into it now. Get into it now. <laughs> okay. Um, I just was like, why? Like, in, in what world in 2020 can you have amnesia, like, in the same general region as the place that you live and you're like um like a well-known mobster can you just have amnesia and nobody like know where you are like he didn't get fingerprinted which you know i gotta cops suck but also don't you want it like you have a wedding rig like don't you want to know like where your wife is or your husband or your children like what so I just always assumed he would have like you know he would be in Nixon Falls for like a month someone would find him and he would come back and play out his story his amnesia storyline in Port Charles so mm -hmm. I do actually hope as similar like I want to see that and I I don't particularly I mean I'm not a huge Sunny fan um so I can understand also why Maurice Bernard would want to like play someone else for a while but like just enough of the Nixon Falls and I'm very glad that it looks like it's that that setting is coming to a close. I hope that they bring Phyllis back or like in with them or whenever she comes back. I do like her friendship chemistry with her Maurice Bernard. Like she brings out something in him that I'm pretty sure Maurice Bernard really likes. Um, but yeah, it's just no way in 2020 um, anybody, I mean like no Facebook post, no tweet, like there's just absolutely no way and it's not realistic. And the amnesia and like loss in the same region storyline is not, I mean, it's soap, so things aren't realistic, but like, let's be like soapy, not realistic, not like bad writing, not realistic. Um, and there was a way to make Nina messy, even with this, right? Like it could have been like Carly trying to regain her relationship with Sunny and Nina, like sneaking behind their back in Port Charles and like going on trips with them or like whatever it is, or like Sunny refusing to leave Nixon Falls, um, something like that where people are like back and forth, but, I, and, and there was a way to make Nina shady and like do whatever they were trying to do with her character, but this wasn't it. It's go and it's gone on too long. It's been going on for what, nine months now? Yeah, and he's such a notorious mobster. The fact that no police officer recognized him even in small town Nixon Falls I guess is, is just kind of really weird to me um yeah so I'm hoping that part will end and yeah Phyllis coming to Port Charles kind of does make sense because now that her husband is gone she doesn't necessarily have a tie to Nixon Falls anymore so she could R. be Lenny yeah so she could be um go transfer to GH to be a nurse there or something like that. Um, so it's a possibility. So I hope they do keep her. And, you know, side note, I, I just started watching clickbait and she's on there. <laughs> so um, I was like, yay for the actress. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I remember thinking there, I just, I feel like in my mind, there was no way Nixon Falls was gonna go on as long as it was. I also didn't know they were gonna kill Lenny randomly like that. So I was like, oh, what if Lenny like goes to GH and has to like meet with, um, uh, why am I forgetting the oncologist's name? And I love her. Why am I blanking on her name? Terry? Um, hmm? Terry? Uh, meet with Terry, right? Like, cause Terry's like a prolific oncologist and like can help Lenny. Like that's what I was like kind of thinking was gonna happen, but there've just been all of these near misses that are not even compelling anymore. And I think that has been, we'll get into like what we don't want to see now like next I think that what they've been missing is like the compelling pieces um of like making the story work 
there's just been too much space. There's been people aren't on the canvas enough for you to care. I think that's what happened with Dante and Sam, um, where it was like people were kind of excited about it at first and then we didn't see them for weeks. Um, so let's get into like, what do you not want to see? I'm, and I hate to say this because these are African American characters, but I'm not that interested in Curtis. <laughs> and um, um, what's the doctor's name? name. Tri- oh, Portia. Portia. Um, I think they're putting in this whole paternity thing to make it more interesting. Um, but it, it's just not, it's not compelling. And honestly, and I don't do this often because, but I did it be, during this week. I kind of fast forwarded through their scenes because I was so interested in the Jackson Nina that I was just like, come on, let me get through this part. And I didn't actually hear, I mean, I, people were on social media throwing around that Curtis might be Trina's dad, but I didn't actually hear her say that. I just heard their, her say that there's a paternity issue and since they've been so vague about when Curtis and Portia had the affair they just kept saying before the divorce that I didn't know it was a possibility that Trina's paternity was in question so it's really interesting um, that they're going down this road and but not interesting now there's certain it's funny it's like certain timelines uh and the story it, it doesn't gel well so like I if they're gonna focus on Sunny and his amnesia then focus on that don't intersperse it with a boring storyline I guess it kind of slows down the pace or whatever but it because then I miss key things about the other thing which I would have been interested in if it wasn't about Jacksonina so yeah I'm like mm. but and then also I to see of what I'd like to see more of um, hello, um, Victor Cassadine. What the hell happened with the, I mean, they just dropped the fact that they, that he, the kidnapped, um, homegirl and then they just let it go. I was like, I want to see that. <laughs> That's what I want to see. Um, so yeah, less of, you know, right now the Curtis and, um, Portia storyline, um, because I'm, I really want them to wrap up the Nina and the Jax thing. And now with Peter yeah oh yes I hear that yeah the I think the the Portia and Curtis stuff is like another example where they planted a seed a long time ago but didn't tend to it they did bring up like that the timing for Trina's birth would have is like a possibility for Curtis because Curtis was like hey I did the math when they first introduced uh, Portia onto the canvas. He was like, Hey, I did the math. Is Trina mine? And Portia was just like, no. And that I was it. I remember that. that it was so like, funny. it was such a blink and you'll miss it thing. The old, yeah. like, I just, I just held on to it because I was like, that's going to be mostly because it was a story about Trina. And I think that's the problem with Portia and Curtis is that they're really, to me, their relationship's only interesting because it's going to impact Trina. And so what I'm excited about for that is just that it's it's just another thing for Sydney and Michaela to play with in terms of her acting. And it's probably going to be like the way in which Spencer is able to start like making some kind of amends with Trina by being there for her. Um, but I agree that it was like the timing was weird and it's totally more about Trina than it is actually about them and their relationship, which is not compelling. Um, and I think to that point, really quick, Sandra, um, is that they never, th- and the reason Tanya didn't know is because it was such a throwaway. Like, that's why we say the teens understand the assignment, because they, like, will give you those glances and will do whatever. Like, Portia never looks uncomfortable when Trina and Curtis are talking. Like, there's just, like, nothing that gives you this vibe. And so the only reason that people held on to it is because it's a soap, and that's something that a soap would do, not because the soap is, like, giving us the indication that it would happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's just more of that plot plot versus character right like it would have been really easy for Portia to like at least look a little uncomfortable um and I would say the other less of less of that Jarly 
like rewriting of history. Now, and I'm gonna say this as like someone who is, I'm not, I've never shipped Jason with anyone. Like I'm not a Jason fan. And I actually straight up, like I haven't fucked with Steve Burton's Jason since he, um, since he left Sam when she thought she was pregnant with Franco's baby because she thought Franco raped her. Um, which huh, we could do a whole other episode just about like weird rape retcon stuff that's happened in soaps because I wrote a paper about that in undergrad once. Um, but <laughs> um, like that, like. I, so I'm not attached, like I'm not a Jay Sam fan. I'm not a liaison fan. I actually enjoyed both those relationships at different times, although neither of them towards the end of their arcs. Um, I don't ship Carly and Sunny together. Like I actually don't care about who any of those people are with necessarily. It's not to say I don't enjoy the relationships that they're in. I'm just like not attached, but like this configuration is not it. It's not it, and it's not it's not reflective of Jason and Carly's actual relationship. Like, yes, Carly was obsessed with Jason at one point. Maybe we could call that love. Hopefully, she's learned <laughs> a little bit more about how to be in slightly more healthy, loving relationships since she was uh, Sarah Sarah Joy Brown Carly back in the nineties. Um, but. This is not like, I'm not an embittered shipper. I'm just like a long time viewer who's like, what's going on here? And we can go there with relationships, right? Like Liz and, and Nicholas, when it first started was like wrong, but it wasn't like, there was chemistry there. There was history, like they, they, they built it up. And until um, they switched Greg Vaughn back out with the real lucky Jonathan Jackson, um, people were actually like into it, but of course, like the dynamic shifted when Lucky was around. But the point is, is like they they took these two people who like shouldn't be together, and they tried to at least make it compelling. With with Jason and Carly, it's like it just happened one day. Like there were a couple little moments where I was like, "Are they?" And I was like, "No, I think they're just being weird." Um, and then they just like went there and expected us to go there with them. And I think it's an example of how this like, this executive team of like men running the show are like, you should like this character and we're in this, this relationship and we're gonna explain to you over and over and over again why you should, instead of it being like, you feel compelled by it and that's why you support it. I have like two thoughts on that because on one hand, I kind of feel like I, I want to kind of think about it from the point of view of the character and the situation that they're in. So as far as Carly and Jason are concerned, Sonny is not in the picture and he's not coming back. And so he's not something that is quote unquote in the way. And so they're the character's perspective about how eh, we feel about it is a little bit different than us, you know, outside in kind of thing. But at the other hand, I'm also thinking of from a writer's point of view is where they don't, they may not, they may actually be happy that we're not happy about this because they eventually plan on getting Sunny and Carly back together. So maybe they do kind of want us to cringe and not really see this as real. And so it's almost, it's like two warring things with me is where I feel like, okay, this is just happening for now. I'm not going to get too mad at it. It's interesting, but this is like a plot device to me. And on the other hand, Carly's, Carly's husband is dead. So she's free to be with whoever she wants to be. I am one of those people who think Sunny and Carly do belong together. And I, you know, kind of feel as soon as she finds out that Sunny is alive, you know, I'm sorry, Jason, I love you, but this is, you're not it. And so that's how I'm feeling about it. Um, so I have, yeah, that, I have two minds in that. I think that I, I, I understand the drama that they're trying to create um, to like make both of them feel guilty when Sunny gets back and all of that. I just think that it's, it's almost the same that I, I mean, I actually really dis despise Michael and Willow as a couple, 
and not because they've done anything offensive to me but because of like the agenda that pushes them like it's a soap so there should be ships and there should be people on both sides and th- what what Michael and Willow did to Chase was like foul and the I- the idea that people are now like oh yeah y'all belong together it was fine that y'all did that is actually not okay like where is somebody who's like you know, even Brooklyn just being like, yeah, it was great. Like, Chase is your friend. You could be like, yeah, Michael, that was, I get it, but it was foul. And we don't have that. And I think in the same way that um, we're seeing with Sunny and, or Carly and Jason, it's not even that, I mean, it is shocking to me that more people haven't put it together the way Jax did to be like, oh, this is clearly a business arrangement. It, and I, yeah, I mean, just like stuff like Jason going to tell Britt before he went to go tell Sam. Like, y'all, y'all not together, but y'all got kids. Like, Jason was supposed to be raising Scout. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was, I mean, we we could also talk about deadbeat dads on General Hospital because we're lucky. Um, like, lucky, you got kids. All of these are your kids. Where are you? Um, and, but yeah, like, Monica like going and like rewriting history to Carly like it's fine put them together like whatever and I would have been disgusted I, I don't really think that um Laura Wright and Steve Burton have chemistry and and I think Laura Wright is a person who has chemistry with most people um but let's not like rewrite history like Jason was in love with Robin like Carly was obsessed with Jason and maybe that was like some sort of love but it wasn't like this amazing love story that we should root for it was something that happened and if people like it they like it but like this this thing that I, to Sandra's point that male writers are doing like let me tell you why you're gonna like this couple because everybody around you is gonna be like this is great is is for me is not it I, I think that's part of the reason why fans are so upset is because they are rewriting history and they're kind of trying to say you know whatever you guys saw in the past didn't really happen and that's what's pissing me off about another storyline this Hayden storyline because Sam literally went to Nicholas and said I know you had something to do it and Billy Miller beat Nicholas's ass and it was like you can find that clip on YouTube folks know that Nicholas was the one who shot Hayden or had a Hayden shot but they're like conveniently forgetting all of this especially Sam and that's crazy to me and that's what and I think a lot of people are really pissed about Charlie about is because it's kind of like they're making us feel like we're losing our minds or we don't know what we're talking about and that's not true when you do that to fans then that's when you know it, it gets upsetting and you lose ratings I'm seeing on on social media that GH is not at the top Um, They never will be with Young and Restless, but still, (laughs) they just like, they're losing, you know, ratings. And that's what it is. It's because you're pissing really long-term fans off and you're taking us for granted. And that's a mistake. They're gaslighting us just like Esme. Just like Esme. Very Gen Z speak. They were like, somebody was like, what would Gen Z say right now? And Spencer was like, we're gaslighting her. We're gaslighting her. (laughs) I was like, what? (laughs) <laughs> you know that social media language dude that I love that. those Gen Zers <laughs> they really are just doing it all for us right <laughs> and, and I think that the other thing is so fans are really forgiving and are willing I mean like we let kids be one years old one day and 20 years old the next like we are like we understand some of those things but there are other foundational things that they do like your point about um Sam not knowing about Hayden, like, like rewriting the like love stories of people who we watched for 20 years, like this is actually not the kind of thing that's forgivable. And y'all are not gaining new fans. There's not a like a lot of new ways for people to like access soaps the way they were when we started watching soaps, right? Like, there's not, um, like I would venture to say people are who are in school together like aren't watching soap operas at whatever time they're probably watching CNN or MSNBC like you know what I'm saying like it's not there's not soap net anymore or these other ways to access it it's like either you are a person who watches this or you're not um and so because that's the case you can't actually do this thing to like long-term fans because that's all you really got at this point and it's the long-term fans that spur the traditions 
like I was saying that my mom and my grandmother and I wash it and now I wash it and we're not going to want to do that if we have like those of us with kids we're not going to want to pull our kids into it because we're not that interested in it anymore so that's something that they should think about so I do want to ask um so because we're all on social media want to see like I just want to talk about like how behind the scene drama is like impacting storylines um yeah so what do y'all think about that because like it definitely is um interested to hear what you think about that yeah this whole Jax being an anti-vaxxer thing or Ingo Ragnar <laughs> I'm just like Mad what <laughs> it's just like crazy I mean Jax as a character is annoying to me is all get out and he's you know very you know him and an alexis i i don't like their personalities i can't stand them and and nancy lee Gron on social media you know she she seems kind of woke but i also do remember her going off on viola davis and that changed my opinion of her a lot i, I can't forget that and now Ingo going off on you know vaccinations and all this other stuff and I also feel like he he had said something that was kind of a little racist and classist and I'm like oh I, I it makes me not like them and there was like yeah the thread the fire Ingo thing I was like maybe because his character is not useful to me right now and him as a person is not useful to me so um yeah maybe they should just let him go i i like the brother a lot better sebastian roach is amazing he should come back um him and ava mixing it up but anyway i like nicholas and ava but so um but yeah that that is coloring a lot how i feel about the care this this the show and the characters and all so it does have an effect yeah i was i was i, I, I was a Jax fan once upon a time up until I like found out via social media that he's a MAGA and um he's like said some wild shit um during the storming of the Capitol and called these people heroes and like also was like calling COVID the China virus like so we just know we actually know he's a straight up racist white supremacist um and I will say this week has been the most useful and enjoyable Jax has been in a really long time um and that's great that's a great note to end on I'm ready for him to go um and 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 I know that I'm really done with someone when they're making me like Nancy Lee Gron again because similarly I also wasn't fucking with her after um, after what she said about Viola Davis. And um, I, I was, you know, I had mixed feelings about Alexis then, but like that really changed the way that I kind of saw her. I was like, oh, you are this kind of triggering white feminist. And now I'm like, all turned around. I'm like, don't get Nancy COVID, Jax. Like that scene between her and Jax was so uncomfortable. I was like, I mean, and of course, like, you know, Nancy's, she's a good soap actress, like she played her part, but there was this like edge that maybe I was reading into, but I was like, where she was just like, Jax, mm, made your bed. I'm not fucking with you. So, the vibe was definitely there. I like, was like, oh, this here. is... <laughs> And also, similarly, I, I just love that we all consistently was like, I like what she did to Viola Davis. Because <laughs> I was embarrassed. I was like, people know I watch GH. I'm like, God. <laughs> <laughs> As if people like understood and made that connection. But in my mind, people knew that like made the connection and it was about me. Like you, right. Nancy, have embarrassed me because people know I know you. <laughs> like, it's like when you have a white friend that like publicly fucks up and you're like why don't people know that we're friends <laughs> about Nancy I was like people know that like right. we're associated but now I'm like you know I'm just I'm I'm holding Nancy with complexity and yeah. the enemy of my enemy is my friend and Ingo is definitely my enemy I, I declare him my enemy 
I, I wanted to kind of bring that up because it's almost like there have been instances where GH is trying to be really cognizant about um, racial dynamics. And that conversation that Cam had with Trina was good, but I almost feel like she could have, it, the, she could have been a lot more um, direct and blatant about things. Like you got away with this. I mean, she did kind of, kind of walk around it, but literally like you got away with walking away because you're white. Just say it. You know, I wanted them to be able to say that. And, but I was kind of glad that they kind of talked about it. Um, and so, or the fact that um, Alexis's daughter, Molly, is being cognizant of being a prosecutor and what that means. I thought that was a little bit interesting. And they could have actually gone more in depth with that too. Um, the fact, yeah, cause she's mar married or in a relationship with a black man and as a prosecutor, how would that, you know, how does that make him feel? You know, that kind of dynamic. I actually kind of want to see her actually get a case that causes tension between them. That would be really interesting to see. Um, but GH kind of skirts around things a little bit when it comes to race. And um, I think they tried with Portia and Jordan kind of talking about things. Um, but I think they can actually go a little bit deeper. Um, they can afford, I think they can afford to do it, frankly, but you know, they don't. I, really I don't know if they have a writer with the range to do it. So that would be interesting. I mean, they can always bring us in, we're available. Um, and I think to your point about the thing with Trina and Cam, it didn't, I mean, it was a good conversation. I'm glad Cindy Michaela had that moment. Um, and I think that the skirting around doesn't ring true to who Trina is. Like Trina goes up and was like, excuse me, um, did you uh, steal my uh, boss's dead daughter's ID badge and set her on fire, bitch? Right. Did you do that or no? <laughs> and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's who Trina is. And so to like kind of skirt around with Cam, like she's always been really like direct with him. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, oh yeah, that kiss, that was some trauma shit. We're good. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like she's always been that. Um, so it didn't ring true. And then to the judge thing, it was just, it was actually painful to watch because it was like taking this really complex issue about racism in the system and like turning it to like the problem of one white woman. Like, I, I just, I, I, there was like something about it that like, yeah. I, don't, I mean, because that's my work. I was like, Ugh. and, I, and I we could have done better. Yeah, because Alexis got bored while she's in prison. So now I'm going to research this and like, oh my God, you're going after my friend, Sean, what? Yeah. <laughs> Orange is the new black moment. And it right? was not, it was not it. <laughs> it was like another and one of those moments knows. where I was like, Alexis, I'm done with your like white feminist shit. Yeah. But then and ABC you know how to, to come do it better. along and- huh? <laughs> E e Tracy, I was you saying ABC knows how to do it better because they did it better on Station 19. Everybody should watch Station 19, by the way. Yes, that's a plug. that's a that's a good show. Yeah. Sandra, any other behind the scenes juicy drama that you know about that's impacting story? I mean, I know people are um, really upset with Laura Wright. <laughs> like, people are really upset with her. I'm not sure that it's totally fair, but um, yeah, I know that, well, there's two layers to people being upset with her. One is, of course, like Jason and Carly, like they see her as being like the person kind of like pulling the strings behind the scenes with Frank Valentini or whatever. I don't really know if their relationship is like that, but the second half of the beef that people have with her is also connected to her relationship with Frank, and it's that they blame her for Wes Ramsey, aka Peter, being on the show because they're partners in real life. And there's a story <laughs> that's on social media. So like we also we've been like checking out GH Twitter in the pandemic. You know, it's it's popping, and people kept referring to Peter as PLP. And I was like, what is, what is this PLP? And then I was like, parking lot Peter. So I finally did my research and the story that is are circulating around social media. I haven't found the source, 
but um that that Wes Ramsey was with Laura Wright in the parking lot of GH and Frank well Frank ran into them and just decided that he loved Wes and hired him to play Peter and so um so fans are both are blaming Laura Wright for both Jarley and parking lot Peter and I hate both those storylines um but I don't know that I can really um I can really blame Laura Wright for them I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and blank blame Frank and the writers um even if Laura Wright does want these things I think they could have better boundaries Yeah, I actually kind of like Wes Ramsey. I think a lot of people don't like him because he was educated at Juilliard and he speaks all proper and all this other stuff. But I, I don't blame, I mean, I don't blame him for the sucky storyline that he has um, or as an actor. Um, but um, yeah, I think the the hate they have on for Laura Wright is really crazy to me. She does have a lot of scenes and all this other stuff and she's you know on a lot of you know she has a lot of airtime compared to let's say you know elizabeth or whoever but um in some instances carly is just more compelling and so I don't get, you know and um so i can't blame her for that um i mean i i don't know lore i like i don't get a sense of laura's personality the same way as the other characters so i don't necessarily have anything against her either whether or not Wes Ramsey got his job because he's with her I don't know who I mean if so whatever I mean I don't care enough about it um so for me that kind of behind the scenes drama isn't necessarily affecting the storyline for me per se um it's interesting you know gossip is always interesting but <laughs> um, it's not affecting the storyline for me <laughs> I find Peter to be awful, if I'm being honest. I, and it's not even like I don't like Wes Ramsey. Like I, and I actually blame it on like directors for allowing him to like take the character in that direction. Like pe other people have to see this to be like, this is bad. You sound like a cartoon. Um, and so that makes, I mean, you know, he just has not been like, so I think about Maxi. like I'm an OG Kristen Storms fan. Like, you know, Days of Our Lives, Xenon, you know, that's my girl. Um, I would also need them to get a better stylist for her on the show. Um, but like, he just wasn't a strong scene partner for her. Um, and yeah, that's why I think she, she seems to really be enjoying this kind of like shenanigans with Brooklyn. And like, maybe I think that the thing with her and Austin is a little weird. He feels like he might be too old for her, but um, I, I have heard that Roger Howarth is like an amazing scene partner. So, you know, maybe that'll be good for her. He just wasn't like, he sounds like a cartoon. Um, and I think that there's some things that he could have done or that directing could have done to make him better. Um, I feel a little bit of that same way about Cam. Cause I feel like Cam had done like a, like wasn't amazing. Cam does really well when he has like a, a good scene partner. When Cam has, um, when he was like with Trina a lot, he did well. Um, when he was with Roger Howarth a lot, he did really well. Um, he's like compelling. And like, I, I thought that him and Oscar were like cute together. I liked him and Dev, even though that was like weird. Um, but when he doesn't have that, he also doesn't have really good direction. And so I, you know, I, I sometimes like, I don't, I'm not mad at the actor or the character for that. I'm really more mad at like the director for allowing it to go that way. Yeah, yeah. I think Cam's also, um, I, I like Cam and Spencer's dynamic and I'm, I'm interested. It seems like they're going to try to uh, build that up more. And I think that would be nice. It's nice to see, uh, cause they have a lot of history of rivalry as children. But yeah, with, with Wes Ramsey, I am kind of like, cause you know, there's so, we're so saturated with villains right now, which is no problem. I love a GH villain, but there are so many good villains right now, right? Like Cyrus is back and I hopefully in a, like a larger capacity. Cause I love that actor. Um, 
uh, I like Esme. She's, you know, and her potential connection to Ryan or not potential connection to Ryan, what the nature of it is. We still don't know. Um, so Ryan's back on the canvas and also now Victor Cassidine. And so it's like, Peter can't really hold his own with any of them. Like when they, when they were having scenes with Peter and Cyrus, I was like, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Just Cyrus, please. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, <laughs> you know, I know there's a lot of talk about him being classically trained on Twitter and that's very funny. Um, and there are also people on the show who have been classically trained that are not like that. So I'm, I'm, I think, you know, his time, sometimes you gotta, you, what is it? The, uh, the quote, you gotta learn how to get up from the table when love is no longer being served. Oh, I was thinking you gotta know when to hold it. <laughs> <laughs> no when to fold, no when to walk away. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I Both of those. Both of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I mean, I think I'm not excited about him being back as far as him as a character and wanting to see how he grows. I'm excited that he knows about Sonny and somehow it's gonna get out. And I want, you know, um, homegirl to be released from Victor Cassidy and I want her to kill him her or Anna or somebody <laughs> just to kill to really Liesel. Kill her, Liesel, to really kill him and have him be dead um and so that's that would be good um but other than that I'm I mean yeah dead enough that two medical professionals would know that he's dead yes. he's actually for real <laughs> for real that's why the, I agree. I am glad that Peter is back because I knew by the way that he fake died that he was like not dead. Like not even like, oh, I don't know, soap dead. Like, no, this this guy is not dead. So I'm glad that they're bringing him back so we can like, let's wrap it up. You know, like, let's wrap it up. All right, so we're going to close out. This was so much fun. I could talk GH with y'all forever. So I'm going to hold it so it can be in these conversations. Um, so not based on any spoilers um what are your predictions so we know that the wedding is happening september 17th they told us 25,000 times it's happening september 17th also that it's been september 17th since tuesday um what are your predictions for next week i don't well i feel like something big is going to happen with the wedding but I still don't feel that we're at a point where Sonny's going to walk in at the wedding. I think maybe awareness or knowledge that he's out there will be there, but him busting in through the wedding, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, so I don't know about that. I feel like there's going to be some reveal around Esme, but I'm not quite sure. I hope so, as I agree with you. I like that she's in the mix. And I do actually see her as being more long term than just the the crazy girlfriend. I think they're she they try they're they're putting out a connection in some way, shape, or form. And having her and Ava interact more, it'd be really interesting to me. Um, that's all that I can think about right now. I'm hoping, you know, I just hope that the secret about Sunny being alive is out whether or not he knows it, whether or not Carly knows where he's at, I don't know. But the fact that he's alive and that this wedding doesn't actually happen needs to happen. <laughs> yeah, I agree that um, I don't think Sonny is going to interrupt the wedding. I don't think he'll remember who he is by the end of the week. I do think that he will know that Nina knows who he is. And that he might get information about who he is, but he's not going to remember fully. I think he'll also start to have more memories. Um, but I, yeah, I agree. It's not going to all be wrapped up by September 17th, which by the way, it's been September 17th already for a week and it's going to be September 17th for another week. This has all been one day for the last two weeks. Yeah, no, I, uh, I mean, <laughs> so I also week. predict by the end of the, the week, it will be September 17th. Yeah, knowing GH, this probably won't wrap up till like New Year's. They always do some sort of Christmas New Year's thing, which is crazy. Um, I think that um, 
Let's see what else. I think that, I think Jason and Carly will get married. I think the wedding will happen and that whatever happens that's disruptive will happen after they've already said I do. Um, that's my prediction on the wedding. I also think that Curtis and Portia are either going to split or be on their way towards breaking up this week. Um, and that that's going to be part of the reason why she holds back on um, talking about paternity. And I think Jordan's going to need another kidney. So we know Ryan's a match. <laughs> Um, and speaking of Ryan, um, I think similarly, I think we're going to learn more about Esme, um, both her history and or her other, like she has other motivations besides Spencer's money. Um, and so I think we're going to find out more about that, um, especially because I think we saw from the previews for Monday, this, I don't count this as a spoiler since it was on TV, but that there's going to be a scene with Valentine um uh Spencer and Nicholas and it didn't look like Esme was in it and so we know whenever Esme is not attached to to um Spencer's side that she's up to something devious and so I'm if not predicting I'm hoping that she goes to see Ryan at Spring Ridge um and I also maybe this is more of a wish but I I hope that we start to like untangle like Nicholas gets kind of like inserted back into this Hayden, Drew, like Olbrecht maybe is involved in this like weird storyline that's unfolding with Drew being in, in prison. And so I'm wondering if too, if Valentine is gonna, is gonna like, if this is gonna pick back up on like the Valentine Spencer um, and Nicholas rivalry, like family feud um with this new storyline so I'm hoping I'm hoping it does because I, I also want to see them interact more and in that like Helena spawn like family drama shit what about you Tracy yeah I'm really excited for um some this Spencer and um and Valentine like I think that those are going to be some very funny bougie ass showdowns that I'm really excited about um, <laughs> I the other thing that we didn't talk about is Peter really walking in on Nina at the end and so Sonny doesn't have or Smike <laughs> doesn't have his phone um and so I think that um and I haven't read this so apologies if this is spoilers this is all me just like speculating and hoping I think that Peter is going to kidnap Nina um and uh Jax and Sonny are not gonna know where she where she is, and Sonny's gonna be blaming Jax. Um, and I think that uh, Peter is gonna bring Nina back to Port Charles um, and try to do something to Maxie, and that that's how they're gonna end up at Sonny and Car or, uh, Jason and Carly's wedding. Ooh, this is my hope. If I were the writer, this is what will happen. I'm gonna have to like go back and rewatch this so I can track all the plot points that you offered. It was. Chef's kiss. It's never right. These are just things that should happen, but the writers never do them. <laughs> it's like, this is my yeah. thought. I think I, I, I am interested in seeing Nikki, Nicholas, and Valentine interact and Spencer. Uh, the fact that, you know, Valentine hasn't really, I don't know, and maybe I missed it, but Valentine hasn't really talked about Spencer being back in town is interesting. And I think it would be interesting if Valentine is the one that blew up Nicholas's spot and was like, you shot it you shot Hayden where is she at <laughs> you know because I would yeah. love that yeah so I think that would be good that would be interesting <laughs> and one other drop storyline between Spencer and Valentina is I'm pretty sure that's the last conversation they had when Spencer was um played by Nicholas Bechtel which was uh that Spencer rigged the election in Laura's mm -hmm. favor and that's never been addressed Valentine was just like I know. So you better watch yourself. Stop coming up in my house and threatening me all the time. What if he's the one that finds out that Spencer was the one that's been stalking Nicholas? That Ooh. would be interesting too. Cause he would have like, look, I know, first of all, I know what you did with the mayor. And now I know what you're doing with your dad. You need to cut it out or something like that. And then, you know, it'd be weird if all of a sudden Nicholas starts liking Valentine better than Nicholas. 
<laughs> no, Spencer starts liking Valentine better than his own dad. That might be interesting. <laughs> You brought up Tyler Christopher. Some of the stuff, like, I know we said this stuff all the time, but I cannot see Tyler Christopher doing st- this stuff that this new Nicholas is doing. This, like, running around in a bootleg scream mask. Yeah. Like, fake stabbing his kid. Yeah. This is not princely. Not princely. No, he wouldn't do that. But he has, but, but Tyler Christopher did do that evil stuff. He's the one. Yeah. That, yeah, so. Um, He's high-level evil. That was some yeah. evil. Yeah, yeah that was very important. <laughs> He's evil with style. Like that yeah. was like some frat house shit. Like that was not. I mean, I loved it. I love that mess. Yeah. Excellent mess, but it was not like I could not see Tyler Christopher doing that yeah. at all. I do like new Nicholas. I think he's hot, but yeah. <laughs> not he's, as hot as Tyler, but yeah. No. He's no. I think the best Nicholas recast they've ever done. Right. But that's not saying much. <laughs> so I want them to bring Lucky back and I want Lucky to act like he got some kids yes like because all three of those kids are Lucky's kids all three of them yes. he adopted Cam yeah and Jake he I, I think he's on Jake's birth certificate did they ever uh, switch that I don't know. either way he raised Jake like as a child and I think there's so many other instances on the show where they've seen that like your like blood relationship is not it right like that like there are lots of people who have had very complicated family structures that include non-bio parents Mm -hmm. and so it's like it's I think for me it's especially hurtful with Cam because he doesn't have his biological father in his life his biological father is Xander and he's dead and so like Lucky is really like the only father that he knew it, um, until like fake Drew or Jason Drew and um, and then Franco and so like I I have I have very strong feelings about this um, about Lucky yeah. being a deadbeat dad and specifically about like I think there are ways that even without bringing Jonathan Jackson back because I do not want a Lucky recast never again um is to like just have little cues of like, hey, Lucky called Cam. Do you want right. to talk to him? <laughs> anything. It literally yeah. anything. Like Lucky didn't call him when Franco died. Like it, it, it is actually really upsetting how they've done like Lucky is his deadbeat dad. And I don't like it. I, I just, Lucky could be like distant, but he doesn't have to be absent. Like that's, and that, even when, um they were asking like how cam and spencer were like related or knew each other y'all are cousins you don't just share a grandmother like if lucky if laura is still in your life then like lucky is your dad mm-hmm. anyway. I, want, I want billy miller to come back and i don't know how but i just want him to come back <laughs> i agree 100 <100%. laughs> percent. i am this is the last thing i'll say maybe I'm Cameron Mathis and neutral in general, although after watching those uh, Leo and Greenlee clips, it actually really made me hate Ryan. (laughs) But I'm pretty neutral about him. But like, I just see this recast of Drew as just another way to disrespect Billy Miller. Mm -hmm. And I won't stand for it. You hear that, CH? I won't stand for this Billy Miller disrespect. Would you be okay if they bring Rebecca Budding back. Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, I, yes, I, I, I love Hayden. I want her to come back. Yeah. I, I, I think guess, they're trying like, to do that. With Drew, I think from the, it doesn't really make sense from a c- character perspective, but that uh, <laughs> this is GH, that doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I it doesn't make me any more excited about Drew, her being back, no. No, okay. I think that what would make Hayden interesting is like, I actually hate Finn and Elizabeth. I think it's gross. But like, if they are like together or kind of hooking up or whatever, and then Hayden comes back, like, what the hell is this? Like, that I think would make would make Rebecca Budding's uh, return really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. All like, right. Well, awesome. <laughs> so good. Any closing thoughts before we close out? 
No, I think we hit a lot. Um, I'm excited for Monday and I hope it's not. I really used to get mad at people who would get mad that the news interrupted GH, but this Monday cannot be interrupted. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I, there's just nothing I think that's going on that's compelling enough to interrupt GH this Monday. I need this Monday to happen. So, same. No preemptions this week. No preemptions. No, not September this week. 17th. It's in my literal calendar. Right. I'm going to dress up in a white dress like Mindy from the office on September 17th. And that's how I'm showing up to Carly's wedding. I love it. You know, I'm going to dress. dress up in a black dress like Bobby came to Michael and Nell's wedding. Oh, I'm yeah. probably going to be in work clothes, but yeah, I'm with you in spirit. <laughs> See, we watch on Hulu. So we, like, oh. I don't, we watch on Hulu. Yeah. I don't understand the Hulu thing because I have Hulu and I have the subscription without ads, but I can never get the up-to-date version of GH. It's always like a week or so behind. I don't understand how that's set up. So maybe you can help me out with that. Hulu, <laughs> comes customer every, service. Yeah, it comes up every day for us at 5 p.m. Uh, our time. So it just, I have to check it at 5 p.m. and it's mm -hmm. on? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes okay. they mess us up and they're late. And then you'll see on Twitter, people are like, where the is this Hulu at? But even with preemptions? No, oh, not with preemptions. Oh, no. okay. If it's canceled, it's canceled. Damn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our final thing is don't do anything to preempt GH next week. That's yeah. our final warning yeah, to the final. world. Yes. All right. Well, it, thank y'all for like watching. We're going to put this on YouTube. It'll eventually be on like where you get your podcast. But yeah, hit us up. Yeah. Bye, y'all. Yeah. How do I?